Next up in the winner's bracket, we've got Pal Pelagial version 2. I have no idea how to pronounce that map name, and I am not going to try it again. But on this map, we've got Orange Heart versus Achieved Jaguar. Both of these guys are going Seraphim, meaning that they both have hover artillery, which means, of course, that there's always the possibility that you get slammed with land spam. Meh. Air always destroys me, says Jaguar. Well, then just build some more air factories, perhaps. Pelagial, I have played on a couple of times. It is actually quite a fun one versus one map to play. You got a bunch of tree clumps, not necessarily any rocks to reclaim, but you do get a couple of um, civilian buildings here that reclaim for a fair amount. I don't remember exactly what the value of them is, but perhaps once one of them gets claimed, we will know. Uh, that is going to be a Hydro Rush for a Chief Jaguar after a first land factory. On your home island, you do have three, six, eight, ten mass extractors with technically 13 that are well within your realm of control. Of course, on a map like this, it's going to be a balance between expanding to your outer islands and getting those mass extractors under control, air control, which lets you keep those expansions and hopefully expand even more quickly, and Navy game, because you gotta get frigates in the water. If you get Navy locked, you are screwed. So there's a lot of things to focus on and hopefully both of these players get a firm grasp of it. Orange Heart going hardcore air right off the bat. Maybe taking a tip from Jaguar that he's weak against air. That might be something that you want to avoid saying in the public chat. We've got three air factories planned with a massive, absolutely massive amount of power plans. The ACU is assisting the engineer, so at any point the ACU can break off and choose to go elsewhere. Oh my goodness. Okay, so three power generators now moving on to additional. That was attack moves on the engineers, reclaiming tree clumps that provided the power necessary to get this ridiculously early air transport off of the factory and let's actually take a look at his eco not even power stalled good lord why can't i do these kinds of things jaguar has just now gotten his air factory complete is getting an air scout out and is now producing an interceptor in hopes of countering the transport that i am sure he believes is being built and in fact has been however that transport is so early the air scout may actually miss it completely. It is definitely going to get its drop off. Four engineers or five, five engineers, probably one, three, or one, two, two, maybe? I don't know. He's going for the hydro directly in order to get that extra power, which makes me think he might not even go navy. This looks like the kind of build that leads to T2 air and just gunship domination. I'm gonna call it right now. I am anticipating gunships galore from Orange Heart with overwhelming air control. That is the direction that this is gonna go. All right, so that was 162 mass. Let me see, oh, there we go. All right, 162 is the value of that building. So that's gonna be what, about 700 mass on the outside edge here and uh, no, it's actually more than that. It's close to 900 mass on the outside edge and then like 500 mass here. Quite a substantial amount, definitely enough that you can get your build going early with it. The Chief Jaguar has opted not to go for the air transport early. He is going for it now though. That engineer instead is going to walk across and begin to build on these mass extractors. Now I'm not exactly sure why he's trampling his own tree clumps, but whatever floats your boat, man. Whatever floats your boat. Jaguar has gone for two air factories early and has actually produced a substantial amount of air. He has outrun what Orange Heart has planned. Orange Heart definitely overflowing power. I'm not sure why exactly, but with this build, he is now fluctuating a little bit. What is he building that is consuming so much power? Probably the four engineer power queue and assisted air factory if I had to guess, but he has mass stalled himself to an incredible degree. He is though going to be taking his expansion island much more quickly than Jaguar is, which is gonna give him a little bit of a leg up in overall production. 29 to 29 though means 
maybe not as much as I initially thought because he is missing the outside mass extractor on that edge. Mr. Rowie, 825 mass in the other island in building. So I was close, almost 900 I believe is what I said. I was close. A cheap Jaguar going for a drop on the other side, but that I think is a little bit brave because he is dropping, well, he probably has no intel. Let's take a look-see. No, he does have intel. Okay, why would you drop engineers directly on top of enemy land factories? There is no way in hell that you are going to succeed at, I don't know. You might reclaim one of them and get a point defense up on the other, but he's gonna have artillery. You've got to assume that he's building artillery because he's Seraphim. That is what Seraphim do, yo. So there's the engineer drop, failing at the reclaim on the artillery, although that was a valiant attempt. And now the engineers are under fire. And elimination before the factory goes down. A valiant attempt indeed. I appreciate the effort, but not one that was set for success. A Chief Jaguar is lagging a little bit behind now. He's got reclaim orders out on his engineers, is leaving the rest of this expansion to the engineers that are built out of the land factory. And so we are seeing uh, Orange Heart jumping ahead in eco by a couple of mass extractors, 47 to 43 mass income. And then if we go look at the reclaim. Jaguar is on 2100 as opposed to 2900 for Orange Heart, although Jaguar is starting T2. Nicely done there. Might actually see an ACU drop. I don't know. I was wrong though about what Orange Heart was doing. He does have two naval factories in place, although that isn't a spectacular amount of naval build power. It is something to be sure. T1 bombers getting shot down is a very good thing indeed because that many T1 bombers would be utterly devastating against the close, oh, air fight, against the closely packed power generators and engineers that Orange Heart has in his base. Orange Heart's finally gotten up a pretty good amount of air production and is now closing on Jaguar. That was looking like an even air fight there for a minute, but Jaguar was not streaming the rest of his air across. So Mephi getting in a huge boost of interceptors from this heavily assisted air factory was able to take over the air control and now is free to exploit it as he sees fit. Those five T1 bombers that achieved Jaguar built, had they been interceptors, probably would have saved him. Orange Heart, if we calculate this out, that is uh, two, three, four, and three quarters air factories production five, six and three quarters. That is a lot of air production. And on Jaguar's side, we have three and three quarters. So roughly double the amount of air production from Orange Heart, although Jaguar is running him even on Navy. Okay. The artillery might have a chance of swaying the balance, but I am not entirely sure that, that is the case. Achieve Jaguar has gone for the T2 ACU and is walking forward. I wonder if he's going to just pop up on the edge here and build a point defense to try and deny the artillery that is flowing off this island. That might be the best use of that ACU, but we'll have to wait and see. Jaguar not able to sit still and focus fire those frigates down in order to save the lives of his frigates. He has to stay on the move with varying degrees of, um, of micro, because if you sit still, the artillery will blow you out of the water. So you need to be very, very careful of that when you're going up against the Zooey hordes. That does look like a T2 air factory, so Orange Heart is grabbing that upgrade. I might have not been entirely wrong. We do have engineers out picking up Achieve Jaguar's mass extractors. Currently sitting at 34 to 43 on the mass income. And then that looks to me like a Zooey drop. How successful it will be is yet to be determined. But if he is able to get around the outside edge, let's actually take a look-see at Mephi. Me uh, Orange Heart does not have any radar in place other than on the frigates. 
So should that drop... Oh, that drop is scouted. Okay. All right, so he's moved his interceptors to the other edge of the island. I was about to say, should he be able to get this transport around the back edge undetected, he might have been able to get in and drop and kill off the power generators. But I don't think that's going to be the case any longer because that transport has now been sighted and no matter where it comes in from, those interceptors will be ready to snap it up in the blink of an eye. Although, they're now moving to the other edge of the island. I am not entirely sure why he would do that knowing that there's a transport on his left. Jaguar now up to four air factories, some of them being assisted and one of them being T2. So he is catching up partially to the production that Orange Heart has at his disposal. There's the drop on top of the T1 power generators that is going to wing out to the back to get a little farther away from the ACU. This is gonna be a close one. Nope, the interceptors were not actually pulled in. So there is the drop. T1 point events being built and a single T1 bomber erasing the hopes and dreams of those Zooies. Good lord, the hard counter on that one. T2 finished up on the ACU. Not sure exactly what his plan is with that, but T2 he does have. I think Jaguar would have been very well off to have gone for the taking of this island with that T2 commander. Oh, Orange Heart is going gun. So maybe he's going for the ACU drop. I don't know. We'll have to see. Chief Jaguar up at 73 mass per take thanks to mass T2 mass extractor upgrades taking place in the back. Of course, that harassing frigate coming around the outside edge was able to knock out a couple of T1 mass extractors, but that does put him within striking distance of the economy of his opponent despite having lost a fair few mechs. Now, those two mass extractors have also been lost. I'm not quite sure to what, but if I had to guess, it would be the T1 artillery that was flowing across the front. We do have three T2 mass extractors, four, five, six, seven for Orange Heart. You know what? Let's just get a definitive count. That is going to be seven T2 mechs versus eight T2 mass extractors. Of course, one T2 mechs being worth three of the T1 mass variety in income. That's another naval factory in the back there, bringing a Chief Jaguar up to a total of six. Although he did have seven, one of those is now lost. So a Chief Jaguar is quite substantially ahead in naval production, and he also has a tort bomber out killing off the frigate in the rear there. However, T2 gunships are going to rapidly become a problem. Orange Heart has got a total of 52 fueled up interceptors, almost 60 if you count the ones that are out of fuel. And Jaguar has a paltry 24 fueled, 16 unfueled, or a total of 40. 15 fewer altogether with a poor representation of a healthy fighting force, thanks to all of those that are lacking fuel. Lost out on two mass extractors there. Interceptors now closing in from Orange Heart to pick that air fight. He knows he's got way more inties than his opponent does. He is just going to spearhead directly in, wiping that swarm from existence. Of course, when out of fuel planes run up against fueled planes, the difference is substantial because the fueled planes are able to get behind and eliminate with extreme prejudice. However, the sheer amount of mobile anti-air here, there are six mobile anti-air, seven in the vicinity, that is going to lessen the loss. Jaguar still losing out by a pretty substantial amount, but not the absolute slaughter that I thought it was going to be on that initial engagement. That was a good reaction there, a very good reaction. There is the drop, T2 transport carrying as many artillery as possible and that ACU. Now that air has been won, that is a Nano T2 gun comm headed directly for the base. Meanwhile, Jaguar is out in the water with the tag missile upgrade and T2 on his ACU. So I'm sure that he is going to try to tag missile some T2 maxes. 
But now he's going to watch in horror as his base disintegrates from underneath him. Thanks to that overpowered ACU dropping in. You got T1 anti-air everywhere in a valiant attempt to drop that transport and it will come close down to 35% HP before it drops off the units and dropping shortly thereafter. But another T2 drops in a load of units to assist and Orange Heart cripples the power with the loss of that T2 power generator and immediately starts hammering away at the build power. Now, the problem here is that when you commit like this, you end up trapped in a lot of cases. The advantage is that if you knock out nearly the entirety of your opponent's economy in one fell swoop, well then, you've won the game. So this is going to, I think, clinch it for Orange Heart because I don't see any way in hell the Jaguar will be able to kill that 16,000 HP T2 commander that can bring its own production with it, along with having a quickly regening health pool and the gun upgrade. This is going to be a brutal loss indeed, although Orange Heart is taking a pretty substantial amount of hits from those T1 point defense in the area. This is going to be a last ditch effort. I wouldn't even be surprised if we see, yes, a tack launch from a Jeep Jaguar at that ACU. If the ACU is hit, that'll be another 6,000 HP off. Oh my goodness, 4,000 HP on the ACU. You better move it, Buster. That is not a healthy hit to take. ACU moving off into the water, but I think at this point the damage is done. A Chief Jaguar's base lies in tatters. His power gone, 440 income, all that he can muster. He is building power on the other island and has T2 Mass Extractor upgrades in place over on that edge. He is winning, though, in Navy. This may not be completely lost. Orange Heart, what you gonna do, man? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Oh, oh my. T2 gunships in place, hammering away at a Chief Jaguar's ACU, which cannot. There it is. It is in range of the other ACU. But you know what's funny? 102 DPS means that this ACU literally cannot damage this commander. It is going to regen two extra HP per second over the damage that can be dealt. But the Chief Jaguar has to get up in the front to try to soak that damage and recover his base. Unfortunately, more T2 transports are pouring units in. We've got many, many Zooies on the other side, along with a vast horde of T1 engineers that just dropped next to the ACU. More overcharges being placed as the ACU drops below 3,000 HP. Point blank tack missile in an attempt to take him with him. And it's a miss by a hair. That was so close. He almost tied that. Good Lord. All right, Orange Heart taking the win on that. I don't know why a Chief Jaguar didn't want us to watch that because that was close. So very, very close. But alas, it was not enough. Well played by both of these guys exemplary actions all the way around let's go ahead and get out of this game and see what the next one holds in store for us that is gonna wrap everything up for this video guys if you enjoyed it feel free to drop a like and share it with someone if you want to support the channel catch the streams or join the discord check out the links in the description thank you all for being at least partially insane and i will see you in the next one